Pastor Echoes, you should see us on Facebook if I did everything correctly. We're good. All right, so I'm almost ready here. Before we get started, I'd just like to congratulate uh, Minister Vashti Echoes on a wonderful sermon last week and uh, now being uh, licensed or have her initial sermon right. to the ministry. God bless you, a wonderful message. Um, and so in listening to your message, I, say, I know you should be very familiar with today's Sunday school lesson, so I commend you on a job well done and we shall continue to keep you in prayer. God bless you. God bless you. Thank Amen. you so much. Sister Roz, it's all you. All right. I mean, good morning. Good um, morning. Today's Sunday school lesson comes from the book of Samuel. And I'm going to do it a little differently. Um, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for allowing us to once again study your word. Lord, we just want to thank you for being who you are in our lives. Amen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with some background. The book of Samuel is one book in the Torah and broken into two books in our Bible. First Samuel is about the life of the prophet Samuel. First Samuel is written by the prophet Samuel until his death in 1 Samuel 25. And then 1 Samuel was completed by the prophets Gad and Nathan. 2 Samuel, from which our lesson comes from, is to be believed to be written by the prophet Nathan. The main characters or the main people of these two books are Samuel, Saul, and David. The time frame of the two books are from about 1090 to 970 BC. Second Samuel demonstrates or shows the virtue of humility, destructiveness of pride, and the faithfulness of God's promises. In Second Samuel, we see David, his rise to kingship, his choice of making Jerusalem his capital city, God's covenant with him and David's great sin and its consequences. Second Samuel one, David hears about, hears and mourns about the death of Saul. In chapter two, we see that David is anointed the king of Judah. Chapter three describes the long war between the house of Saul Saul's descendants in the house of David. We'll skip to chapter five. Um, after the wars between the house of David and the house of Saul, all the tribes of Israel come together to David in Hebrew. Chapter six of second Samuel, David has the Ark of the Covenant moved to Jerusalem. Chapter seven, is the royal covenant, a royal covenant was made with David promise that promised to establish his dynasty. Chapter eight describes the many wars that David participated in. Chapter 10, David, the great warrior and leader of his armies decided to stay home instead of going to war. In chapter 11, In chapter 11, David, while at home, far from the roof of his house, he finds temptation in the form of Bathsheba, where she is doing a ritual bathing. He sends a messenger to Bathsheba. She was in no position to deny the king. No one could deny the king anything. She lays with the king and becomes pregnant. During this time, David had Uriah, the husband of Bathsheba killed, murdered on the field of battle. David's actions in chapter 11 was an abuse 
of the power of God, the power of God that excuse me, was an abuse of the power that God had entrusted in him as a leader. This brings us to 2 Samuel 12, where God sends Nathan, the prophet, to rebuke David. With God's direction, Nathan uses a parable or story to help the king to realize his sin. We are, now we're gonna start. We're in the winter quarter of our Sunday school lesson. Our Sunday school lesson is unit three and it's called Justice and Adversity. The title of our lesson is called Nathan Condemns David. Our background scripture is Samuel 12. Our devotional reading is Samuel 12, 12 one, verses one through nine and 13 through 15. Our key verse is 2 Samuel 12, 7a, where Nathan said to David, thou art the man. God was Nathan's, God used Nathan's prophetic voice to not only confront David and give God's judgment, but also to begin the process of conviction, which is a formal declaration of guilt, repentance, and restoration. Second Samuel 12, verse one. And the Lord sent Nathan unto David, and he came unto him and said unto him, there were two men in one city, one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceedingly many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing save one little lamb, which he had brought and nourished up. And it grew up together with him and with his children. It did not eat, it did eat of his own meat and drank of his own cup. And he lay in his bosom and was unto him as a daughter. And there came a traveler unto the rich man and he, and he spared to take his own flock in his own herd to dress for the wayfarer man that was come unto him, but took the poor man's lamb and dressed him and dressed it for the man that was come unto him. Now in this, in these verses, Nathan shows the difference between the rich man and the poor man and shows that the rich man has abundance and that the poor man has very little, he's impoverished. The rich man blatantly abused his power over the poor man by taking the family's pet to feed his guest instead of using one of his, one of his many flock to feed the, the, his traveler. The rich man's act showed that he had not regard for the poor man and his family and it was truly a heartless act. David, after hearing the story, became very angry. He understood as a shepherd that one could become attached to the young lambs in their care. Excuse me. Verse five, we see, says, in David's anger, was greatly kindled against the man. And he said to Nathan, as the Lord liveth, the man that hath done this thing shall surely die. Verse six, and he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. David was truly angry by the story that David, that, that Nathan told him because he thought it was true. David swore an oath to God and pronounced the death on the rich man and ordered restitution to the poor man. He could not believe how someone could be so mean and so merciless. 
we see that David had become, in, in this way, we see that David is really insensitive to his own sin and did not realize that he was truly the villain in the story. One of the things that I realized when I was reading this is that it's so easy for us to see sin in others and point it out to others and condemn them. Um, Matthew 7, 1 through 12 states, do not judge or you too will be judged for in the same way you judge others, you will be judged and with the measure you use it will be measured to you. And this is from the NIV version. Second Samuel verse seven, and Nathan said to David, thou art the man. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed the king over, I anointed you king over Israel and I delivered thou out of the hand of Saul and I gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wives into thy bosom and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. And of that had been, if that had not been, if that, excuse me, if that had been too little, I would moreover have given thee such and such things. Nathan in this made David aware that he was the man in the story and that he was guilty of sin and that David himself, David condemned himself when he condemned the man in the story. Verse nine, wherefore hast thou despised the commandments of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword and hast taken his wife to be thy wife and has slain him with the sword of the children of Amnon. In this we see that David truly did abuse his power as a leader, not only in the adultery with Uriah's wife Bathsheba, coveting her, but also having Uriah killed in battle. Uriah was one of his soldiers, one of his most faithful soldiers. And then David tries to cover all this up. Verse 13, and David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, the Lord also hath put away thy sin, thou shalt not die. Verse 14, how be it because by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The child also that is born unto thee so surely die. In this we see that David acknowledges his sin, he confesses and is repentant of what he has done. The commandments say that David's sin was truly punishable by death. God's judgment was that the child that was born of Bathsheba and David, an innocent child, a babe, would die in his stead. I'm gonna read Psalms 51, one through four. It's called the Psalm of David. And it's believed that during this time of his judgment, David wrote this Psalm. And I'm just gonna read the first four verses. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, 
blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me for my sins. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. In this, we can see that David is pouring out his heart to God, seeking forgiveness. Verse 15, and Nathan departed unto his house and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bare unto David and it was very sick. In this we see that the, the death of the child was God's judgment of David's sin. Just because God forgives us and restores our relationship with him, he doesn't always eliminate all of the consequences of our wrongdoing. God is aware of all sin. Sin always has consequences, whether the one who committed the sin is directly affected or those around him are. It will not go away unpunished. This lesson teaches that sin is not committed in a vacuum and others are always affected by our actions. Also, I believe this, that God holds leaders to a higher standard of moral behavior and accountability for how they use their power that he invested in them and, and how we treat others. And that is my conclusion of our lesson. Are there any questions, any statements, any clarifications? Good morning, everyone. Good, good morning, morning. Ms. Ross. It was a very good lesson and brings to our attention every day that we can always see something in somebody else that they're mm -hmm. doing wrong, but we have a hard time looking at ourselves in the mirror and seeing that same thing. Yeah. So this story definitely brings that message to us clearly and reminds us that we too need to... Um, look at ourselves and take uh, note and evaluation of what we do. Thank you for your lesson this morning, sister. Thank you. The lesson was clear and concise. And <clears throat> um, when you read Psalm 51, it all, it tells us that how, how deep and how sorrowful David was. And that's the way we have to be when we, when we repent of our sins. And we have to be very careful when we are talking to people about their sin. We have to make sure that our houses are clean, are, are clean and that we have to have live with the right conduct, okay, so that um, God can give us a clean heart so that um, you know, so that we will demonstrate his love mm -hmm. for us. Like I said, you brought out a lot of points and um, you did an excellent job on the lesson. Thank you. Thank you. I have to say goodbye. Okay. <laughs> Good morning. I again say you did an excellent job and like, uh, Sister Wright, I, I took away from uh, from the very beginning of our lesson 
how easy it is for us to see the sins in others and not see our own sins, but also in that how easy it, it is for us to condemn others in their sins, you know, and, and, and say, oh, you know, we, we want to condemn and, and and we don't have that right because we're just as guilty as the next person. The Bible tells us that sin is sin. Matter of fact, God said that he sent his only begotten son into the world, not to condemn the world, but through him the whole world might be saved. And that's what we have to remember, that salvation is for everybody, not just for us. It's easy for me as a person to want to be forgiven. And, 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 and sometimes we even expect that just saying, I'm sorry, that others will forgive us. But but that's not always the truth. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I thank you for the lesson, um, the wonderful lesson. And what I always tell people, and you brought this out, is that God does forgive us of our sins, but there are consequences for our sins. Even though he forgives us, there are consequences. And, and, and you pointed out that what we do affects others. You know, I can say, I'm sorry after I killed your father but you're still without a father. Mm -hmm. I can say, I'm sorry after I robbed you and spent all your money, but you still broke. You know, uh, there are consequences. And sometimes God lets us yeah. fully feel those consequences, you know. So we, we gotta be careful what we do yeah. and how we treat others. So thank you again for the lesson, wonderful, wonderful lesson. There's a saying that simply says, we are free to make choices but we are not free from the consequences of those choices. And, and, and that's what I try yeah. to teach my kids and my grandkids, that very thing that there are consequences to everything they everything do. We do. There are consequences and, and we have to own them. And I guess David owned it. I don't know if I could own it. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing that I caught yeah. a child to die, you know, and that child did die, you know, but the good thing about it is, uh, that David and Bathsheba, they did spare, have another child. Yes, and that child was Solomon. Solomon. And so, uh, you know, we see God's mercy in that, you know, his, his goodness, you know, so. Thank you, Sister Roz. I enjoyed it as well. And what I got out of it, especially for me, we can't approach people like we approach everybody. Sometimes we have to approach people in a different manner. Mm -hmm. And Samuel realized that. And that's why he came up with this story. He knew he couldn't face the, um, the king straight on, but he found a way he could reach him. And mm -hmm. just that's why I like the, um, the verse um, James uh, 119, be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Mm -hmm. Because you have to take time to listen and not just wanted to defend yourself. And um, by saying you're doing this, the, um, the king was listening. Mm -hmm. And I like that when, you know, he, cause you know, when you're in management, you can't talk to the same person like you talk to everybody. You have That's to true. understand each person, their personality to get through to them. So I thank you for that. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, I, um, I enjoyed your lesson as well. It was a very good lesson. I really appreciate you taking the time to divulge the information to us. The main thing that comes to mind here to me is the baby dying for the guilty, how Christ died for us because we're guilty of sin. And as everyone mentioned, when you sin, you not only affect yourself, but you affect other people too. So we need to treat everybody fairly and justly. I really enjoyed your lesson. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, Roz, what's the next lesson coming up? Okay. The next lesson coming up is um, Ezra and the Law. The devotional reading is Ezra 7, 1 through 10, verses 26. 23 to 26, the background scripture is Ezra 7, chapter 7, verses 1 through 26. And our key text is Ezra chapter 7 and 10. I don't know who the 
the instructor is going to be next week. Minister Michael Eccles Jr. Okay. I thought so, but I didn't, I wasn't certain. Is Pastor on? Pastor Thornton? Yes, ma'am. Can you pray us out, please? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Heavenly Father, we come this morning as humble as we know how. Father God, first of all, we want to thank you. We thank you, Lord, for things being as well as they are. Father God, we thank you for your amazing grace and your abundant mercy. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity that you've given us to have a closer walk with thee. Father God, we thank you for the lesson. We thank you for the message. We thank you for the messenger. Uh, Father God, we pray that everything that has been done here this morning is pleasing in our sight. And Father, we pray that this message has touched our hearts and touched our minds, that we go out and live differently, Father God, and be able to tell somebody about a man named Jesus. Father God, give us the boldness to speak truth, the power, and the humility to recognize our need for accountability. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Walk with the King. We all guys called you to be here. I will see everybody next week. God bless. Be having a good day. Blessed. Amen.